Hello, my name is Heidi Haverkamp, and I wrote the Ephesians Bible Study for Gather magazine for fall 2024 on the book Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians. And I wanted to say a little bit about it in this video. Um, I think I'll start by reading the, the focus verse for this session one, which is Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. For by grace, you have been saved by faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Grace is a gift from God. And yet it is one of these parts of Christianity, these words that's kind of hard to wrap our heads around. And part of what led me to write this particular Bible study was actually an encounter I had with one of the one of my readers at a book signing that um, I did in Wisconsin a couple of years ago. The the reader came up and I signed her book and she said, what is your next book gonna be about? And I said, I'm not really sure. Do you have any suggestions for me? And she said, Heidi, please write a book about grace and what it means and how I'm supposed to receive it or understand it or understand why it is God gives it to me. And wow, she really blew my mind and I, I thanked her, but I wasn't sure how to write a book about grace because I think I also am still trying to understand it and receive it myself. So when Gather approached me about doing this Bible study, I sort of heard that woman's voice in my head again, and I even heard that call in my own life. And I felt led to this letter to the Ephesians, and because it talks so much about grace and because um, it just seemed like the right the right text. So um, so I offer you this study, um, and I'm not sure I can promise that it will help you completely understand grace and just get it all down in your life, right? I, I'm not sure that that's God's intention for us to completely understand everything. And I think that's because God invites us into relationship, right? Which is an ongoing process of back and forth with God, with our neighbor, with ourselves, with the Bible, with the text of scripture. And I think God doesn't want us to come to finality or to, to, to come to the end of the road or the journey and, and know with all certainty, you know, what the gospel means or just exactly um, what Christianity is or who God is. We, we can't can't know that, or even quite who Jesus was. I, I think God wants us to be in relationship with all those things and to be part of our communities and to understand these things together by talking and studying. Um, even if you're studying, doing this Bible study on your own, you're, you're still in relationship with the words and with the tradition. Um, so I guess I want to offer to you that this journey of receiving grace, of understanding grace, is a journey of relationship and process and an engagement with your own life and how you've experienced grace over the course of your own life or, or not experienced it too. Um, and I guess I want to... I'd like to end with um, an image that really has spoken to me. And it's, um, it's sort of a... Uh, not quite a folk tale, but it's an image, um, uh, an old, old image um, that's not quite about grace, but it, it really does make me think about grace. And that is this idea that if you take salt, and let's think of salt as being sin or difficult experiences or someone else's difficult words or just just the hardships, the ups and downs of life, the things that we do wrong, the wrongs people do to us. Um, if you take salt and you put it in a teacup, just a little teacup of water, it totally ruins the tea and it turns your, it, it turns, it, um, it makes you grimace. It's the tea becomes undrinkable. It just sort of changes everything about that cup of tea. But if we pour salt, if we throw salt into something more broad and expansive and wide, like a pond or a lake or a river, that salt definitely changes something and it doesn't stop being salt. It doesn't stop being a little bit caustic and acidic, but the lake or the river or the pond is much brighter, broader and wider to receive that salt. And it doesn't have such a great effect and there's still room for things to grow. And you can, you can take a mouthful of that water and not really notice the salt being there. And I guess I want to say that grace is like increasing the amount of fresh water inside of our hearts and our lives and our minds that we can be more expansive. We have more room to receive the hardships of life without them making us 
grimace or react or or feel that everything has been ruined or totally changed. We can be broad with love and grace and the sense of God's presence and the promise of the gospel. And we can be more like a river or a pond or a lake. Um, and, you know, I guess I, I find myself even thinking about the ocean, which is full of salt, right? The ocean is so salty, and yet it is so big. And there are all these creatures who've learned to live in the salt water, and they live and they thrive, and they're beautiful. And here's this whole ecosystem that's learned to coexist with salt, which is harmful for life. And so aren't we also invited by God and by Christ and by the letter of the Ephesians to the letter to the Ephesians to live with the hardships of life by embracing the abundance that grace offers us, that God accepts and loves us, that there is always the chance to start over again, that sin is part of life and it's okay and we can learn to live with it and work around it and be accountable for it and still keep going and still find goodness and truth and God's love all around us. And so I commend to you um, this Bible study. I, I hope it can be a help and a gift to you and your small group. And um, I just give thanks to God for you and for the chance to write this for you. And may we all learn to receive grace more and more as we walk through this life with God by our side. Amen. <music>